Hello! Today I am bringing you something I've been seeing a lot of recently on booktube, which is the if you like this book you may enjoy this book kind of video. So I just really like watching them, so I really wanted to give it a shot myself. So yeah, let's get started! So with these, I'm not going to be like, in some of the books I feel like there's like multiple books I would say that if you enjoyed this one you could read these two books or vice versa there might be two books where I say there's these two books and if you like those two you might enjoy this one so you kind of get it as I go along. But the first book I'm going to talk about is The City of Bones, the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare and I'm going to say if you enjoyed this book you should pick up either, I have two books here for this one, Trial by Fire by Josephine Angelini and Angel Fall by Susan E. Both of these books, I feel like if you enjoy the Mortal Instruments, you could enjoy these too. Angel Fall is based in a kind of dystopian world where angels have come back to Earth and they're wreaking havoc. The main character, Penryn, she loses her sister. Her sister kind of gets kidnapped. So she goes to save her sister and that's kind of what happens. I don't know why I get a kind of City of Bones feel, but I just kind of do in the fact that the female protagonist is quite cool in that. She, there is like a love interest who is quite sassy, I feel, a bit like Jace. So yes, Angel Fall by Susan E. Then we have Child by Fire, which is a parallel universe kind of story, where you have Lily, who is a very, very, very allergic girl. She is allergic to a lot of things in this universe. So basically she gets taken from our universe to another universe by her alternate self. For an unknown reason, we don't really know why, but yes, I just, the female protagonist, this is once again really cool, the um, love interests are interesting, it does get a little bit love triangle-y, which is something you probably have seen in this, but there are just aspects of this where I feel like there are just hints of a City of Bones feel. Sometimes you just get that feeling, don't you? The next series is once again a single book series that I have two recommendations for, and that is the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. If you don't know what this is about, where have you been? But I have two books that I'd recommend based off someone enjoying this book, which are the New Heroes series by Michael Carroll, The Quantum Prophecy, and then The Saga of Darren Shan by Darren Shan or the Set to Free series. Both of these series have really fun middle grade feels, they're very middle grade-ish books. The male protagonist is really cool in both of these, like this one's got a more ensemble-ish protagonistic feel and this is much more Darren's perspective and I just enjoy both of these a lot and I feel like if you enjoy those kind of books these are good for you. This is superhero books. Ten based 10 years after superheroes have all disappeared and basically people start discovering their superpowers again and it follows a young boy Colin and his friend Danny who discover they have superpowers. Just that feels like a Percy Jackson kind of book to me, discovering they have these powers. So this series is good for that. This series he gets converted into a half vampire to save his best friend's life. I just feel like the main character's voice feels a little bit similar to Percy's in that he is quite a funny character, I think, and he's kind of about the same age at the beginning, so yes, these two. Next up, we have a kind of inverse. I have two books that I have a series that I think you could read if you enjoyed these two. Bearing in mind with these two books, I have only read the first in each of the trilogies, but it's just kind of the vibes I got from them, and those are If You Enjoyed Shatter Me by Tahira Murphy and The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. I am suggesting you pick up Gone series by Michael Grant because these have got superpowered humans, these have got superpowered humans, the world is going to like absolute crap in both of these, the place is going to crap in this, it's just a really, this is a kind of weirder look at it in that only kids are there and the parents have all disappeared and there's this thing that's a enemy and this is just a really good series and I feel like if you enjoyed these two you could really enjoy Gone, especially The Darkest Minds I probably think in that this has got much more, the protagonists are generally younger feel to shatter me honestly. 
I feel like some of the protagonists in this are much younger and Gon has got youngish because they're 14, 15. The main protagonist is 14 in this book. And then The Darkest Minds, I feel like, you're yeah, like 16, but you've got Zizumi, I can't remember her name. Yeah, well, Zoo. Uh, she's really young, and I feel like that kind of youngens the whole thing. And this has got Juliet and Adam and things, but I feel like they're like more 16, 18. I think. I remember making that up. But yeah, I think if you enjoy these two, you'll really enjoy Gone, personally. They, like This one especially has been described as like dystopian X-Men. But I would say this is like superheroes in the real world, what superpowers in the real world would actually do. So yeah, these two. And next up, we are going to be doing a one-to-one -one recommendation. So I know I probably shouldn't say if you enjoyed this, you might enjoy this other book. Because I'm saying if you enjoyed Harry Potter, I think you will really enjoy the Mr. Monday series. Well, Mr. Monday and the Keys to the Kingdom series by Garth Nix. It follows a young boy who is discovers that he's kind of heir to the universe just by an unfortunate circumstance, really. And I just feel the story is really fun, it's got magic, it's really action-packed. And Harry Potter, I feel like, is a very young book at heart. This originally, obviously, is a children's book. And this is a probably middle grade kind of fiction. But I feel like, if you enjoyed this, you should give Mr. Monday a go. I mean, I got Mr. Monday when I was pre-ordering Deathly Hallows. So, yeah, I feel like if you enjoy this, give it a go. Because... It's seven books as well, which is just a coincidence, but the protagonist is really cool and really independent and it's got really strong female characters, I feel. And it's just got loads of, like, I don't know, it's not similarities, it just has a feel similar to Harry Potter in that the male protagonist kind of discovers he's got a lot more at stake than he first thought. So, yes, these two. The next two I'm going to be showing you are kind of interchangeable because one of them is big at the moment the other was big a while ago, so I'm saying, either way, I don't have the first book, but if you enjoyed the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas, I think you should pick up the Aragon series by Christopher Paolini. The Inheritance Cycle deals with a young boy who discovers this thing in the woods, and it turns out it's a dragon egg, it hatches for him, and he is kind of one of the very few dragon riders left in Allegasia, and they have to try and defeat this evil overlord Galvatorix but I just wanted to bring this up because this series used to get a lot more love and I feel like it deserves it it's a really good series really fun magical there's elves and dwarves so if you actually like if you enjoyed Lord of, the, Lord of the Rings you might really enjoy this too especially like the Hobbit like dragons and stuff so yeah these two Next up, I'm once again facing the situation where I haven't read all of the, one of the series, but nonetheless, I feel like I have, like, the first book gave me this kind of feel. So, I'm going to say, if you enjoyed The Raven Boys and The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater, I suggest you pick up The Darkest Power series by Kelly Armstrong. I have only read the first one, but it gives me the paranormal fantasy kind of vibes that you get off. Raven Boys, I feel, and it's got a kind of mysterious adventure kind of feel. And the situations are a bit different, where this one's got much more magical prospects. But this one has those hints underlying, especially as you get later into the series. So I just think this is like a paranormal kind of similarities that you could look between the two. But very quickly, which is Schizo by Nick Sheff. If you enjoyed this book, I suggest you pick up The Curious Instant of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. Both of them have kind of unusual male leads in that they both have a mental health issue. He's got schizophrenia, he is on the autistic spectrum quite severely I'd say. And they both have a kind of mystery aspect to them, but this one's much more adult in some of the things it deals with. But this is a really um, interesting look, interesting look at it, and you get to read from Christopher's perspective, and it's just very engaging, and you really feel what he feels, and I just think that Mark Haddon wrote this excellently, so yes, excellently, this one, for this one, and I think this is going to be my last one, but I'm going to be saying, if you enjoyed Twilight, or 
enjoyed of a bit of a romance kind of novel, I suggest you pick up the much, much better Talon by Julie Kagawa. Twilight has that whole kind of forbidden love, star-crossed lovers thing going on. This does it much better with action and it's just much more interesting. The characters are much more three-dimensional, engaging, especially the main character Ember. I really do enjoy her perspective. And her, the secondary main character, Garrett, who is her love interest. He is part of the Order of St. George, who hunts dragons. And then you have Ember, who is a dragon in human form. And it just kind of chaos ensues from there. It is amazing. I'm so excited for the rest of the series. I just think it's got that kind of star-crossed lover thing. So if that's something you really want to see, this could really do well for that. So that was my, if you read this, I hope you liked this. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.